There is a chance, however slim, that my ironic and detached nature could be misconstrued as jerkiness. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Salem was a savage on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I took them all of homeroom to write it so you know it's gotta be good. Hey, leave the sarcasm to the professionals. For this list, we'll be looking at the cattiest things the Spellman's house pet ever said on this magical teen sitcom. Do you recall another time when Salem got his claws out? Share it with us in the comments below. Number 10, when he made extreme demands. In this season two opener, Sabrina's aunts worry about whether she'll study enough for her witch's license. Will I have to parallel park my vacuum cleaner? It doesn't work like that. But for some reason, you do have to take an eye exam. A quiz master will come in the next few days and test you. Now you only have two chances- Don't worry, I can handle it. They ominously hint at potential consequences should she fail, attracting our intrigue. One person, however, who couldn't care less about these mysterious repercussions is Salem. I mean, I've got a great boyfriend, I'm not new at school, and I've finally gotten used to being a witch. And I'll have the liver and brie omelet. Here's your present. In his defense, Sabrina did conjure up a delicious looking breakfast while completely ignoring his request before heading to school. Even so, this fiery feline chooses not to read the room, instead redirecting the conversation back to himself and his stomach. We've given her the book. Now it's up to Sabrina. I'm sorry, I thought I asked for an omelet. Hello. <laughs> After all, if Sabrina doesn't study, that's her problem, right? But without opposable thumbs or magic, how else can Salem get his omelet? Number nine, when he put the fear in furniture. The Spellmans are super excited when their new Other Realm furniture arrives. Except the pieces wind up being a tad chattier than you might anticipate. Do you want to say duh or should I? <laughs> Talking furniture? What, were they people that were turned into furniture? Of course not. Where would you get an idea like that? <laughs> but by the time they realize what's going on, Sabrina's aunts have already agreed to let her throw a Halloween party. That's some seriously terrible timing. To make matters even more complicated, they're forced to trap magical termites in the basement, which means there's nowhere to hide the furniture. Get them off me! This is bad, this is really bad! The furniture talks, the termites talk, I haven't finished decorating. As you can imagine, this opens the door for plenty of potential chaos up ahead. So, with the party about to begin, Salem sticks his paws in and tries to be helpful. Only, apparently, that means striking fear into the furniture and threatening to expose their stuffing. Okay, listen up, you upholstered losers. If you misbehave for just one instant, I'll cut you, man. <laughs> Number eight, when he tried to show sympathy. The Spellman sisters and Mr. Kraft provided one of the weirdest love triangles on 90s, early 2000s teen shows. In the season three premiere, Zelda admits that she's attracted to her sister's former love interest, Willard Kraft. Oh no! Salem, Zelda has a brain lesion! <laughs> Hilda hides her true feelings and plays along, all under the watchful eye of their callous cat. Salem barely gives Zelda a moment to leave the room before laying Hilda's cards out on the table for her. Wow, you must feel like a huge loser. Her angry glare is enough to make him eat his words and desperately try to retract his claws but it's too late. Well, you know what they say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Hey, when you spend eight hours a day licking your butt, you come up with a good idea every now and again. <laughs> Number seven, when he shaded all dog kind. As we just mentioned, Hilda and Willard Kraft had a bit of a thing, but it wasn't love at first sight, at least not for her. Please go with Mr. Kraft. No, he's a goofball. Now leave me alone. But he's nice to me when you like him. When have I ever liked him? This season two episode sees Sabrina conjure up a plan to get them together in a bid to avoid detention. Naturally, she gets some help from Salem. He helps the teen brainstorm ideas and is even willing to provide some necessary assistance in the resulting magical scheme. I'll sneak along on the date and talk for Aunt Hilda. Will you distract Aunt Zelda while I put the spell on Aunt Hilda? Hey, is a dog dumber than a hammer? <laughs> That's a yes. The dog versus cat trope is well played out across all mediums, but Salem manages to breathe new life into it with this vicious canine takedown. This level of shade would leave any dog dragging its tail between its legs. That was amazing. Now do Nixon. 
Number 6. When he reveled in someone else's misery. Remember that talking furniture we discussed earlier? We put them in our credit card, and until they're paid off, we can't zap them away. Well, I have a suggestion. Do something! While Hilda and Zelda are off trying to deal with the misunderstanding, Sabrina and Salem get to know the newest residents of the Spellman home. Sabrina struggles to warm up to their latest additions, but Salem finds silver-lined stitching in the situation. <laughs> a couch who's allergic to cats? Finally! Someone whose life is more pathetic than mine. As we know, the sassy pet was sentenced to a century of cat life after a failed world domination plot. Needless to say, playing with yarn and chowing down on tuna just don't provide the same fulfillment or exciting as plotting a global takeover. So when he meets a sofa with a cat allergy, he's feline pretty good about himself. Excellent! Attention, kids! I urge you to accept me as your ruler. Number 5. When he delivered this backhanded burn. Like many of us, Salem takes to the internet to pass the time when he's bored. There's nothing greater in life than creaming someone in chess over the internet. He said the same thing last week about finding food in the couch. A game of virtual chess soon turns hostile thanks to his poor sportsmanship. Dear Yuri, congratulations. I'm amazed that a person of such low intelligence could defeat me in chess. Hats off to your mother for marrying her brother. <laughs> I'll stop. After that, it gets a little me. <laughs> it's not long before his opponent tracks him down with some unfavorable words of his own. Luckily for Salem, it's Hilda to the rescue. But even though she just saved his fur, he can't resist taking a shot at her. <gasps> Thanks a bunch, Hilda. I'll never call you stupid behind your back again. I didn't do it for you. Although, by Salem standards, this could be considered a compliment. Perhaps next time, Hilda should think twice before defending this cat's behind. Number 4. When he didn't sugarcoat the truth. In a reverse Dorian Gray style situation, Sabrina's ugly attitude manifests itself on her face after a potion goes awry. Unfortunately for her, Salem is on hand to not only point it out, but to rub salt in the wound as well. Sounds like the cable thing isn't working out. <laughs> and your face is a bit of a train wreck, too. What are you talking about? You might think that telling someone they look like a train wreck is harsh enough, but Salem's only just getting started. Let's just say you put the yuck in reflection. By the time he's done, the message has been well and truly hammered home. He's arguably the voice of reason in this scene. Yet even in his most sage moments, this catty kitty can't help but throw all the shade. It's been mentioned. Perhaps your new competitive side has made you ugly before your time. Number 3. When sharing wasn't always caring. Confined to the kitty table, Salem's company for this evening is a witch familiar like himself, called Milady. Who's that? Marigold's pet. She thinks a litter box doesn't stink, and what a lush. Throughout the evening, she gorges herself with catnip. If you know anything about cats, you'll understand what that means. In her inebriated state, she tries to engage Salem in a heart-to-heart, -heart, yet Salem is less than interested. Salem, you're the only one who understands me. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I care. <laughs> Considering her vulnerable state, his remarks seem especially ruthless, but we'd be lying if we said that we didn't laugh just a little bit. If Milady was looking for a paw to cry on, she definitely chose the wrong cat. I want my double to be positive because people always feel positive about positive people. My tuna's coming up. Number 2. When he admitted ruining lives was part of his daily routine. Salem reunites with an old pal named Duke, played by the legendary Dick Van Dyke. Duke's finished serving time as a cat, and now plans to go on the straight and narrow. Unfortunately, he's out of practice, so his magic's not what it used to be. Fetum ritus bovina. Getting exploded. As you can imagine, things go wayward, despite his best intentions. While Duke feels terrible about the mess he causes, Salem offers an alternative point of view. When you're a cat, this kind of thing doesn't happen. Ruining people's lives? It happens to me all the time. It seems that the Spellman cat has been spending his time as a feline felon quite differently than his buddy did. It certainly gives us some insight into Salem's pre-cat life, too. If he can unleash this much chaos now, just imagine what he could do outside his furry confines. I believe you were under a bad influence. Sure, blame the cat. 
<laughs> what? I said blame the cat. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. When he dissed English majors. That hurt more than the paper cuts they get. Why the oh? Out of a hundred tries, it came out 50 heads and 50 tails. What are the odds of that happening? Don't ask me, I was an English major. When his ambition got the better of him, he was so close to acing that interview. Enjoying your life as a cat? Yes. The urinary tract problems? No. Giving back to the community? Yes. Gotten any strays in trouble? No. Still want to take over the world? Yes. Wait, no, I meant no, no! When he had no time for Cupid. Someone's being a bit of a sourpuss. Sickening me. Get a real job! And some pants! When he schooled us all in Spanish. Don't say you never learned anything from Mr. Saberhagen. Hilda's still not back from her audition? No, that's Spanish for no. When he told it as it is. All that matters to Salem is that all eyes are on him. Is it wrong to be a man? <laughs> Don't ask me, I'm not exactly the authority on men these days. Oh, and your suggestion to give Josh a nightmare about Prague was completely useless. Sometimes I just like to hear myself talk. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. When he reinforced cat norms. With a mortal spending the night, the Spellmans try their hardest to act normal, which is easier said than done for them. It's not me I'm worried about, it's Jenny. Is she a rumpist? No, but if she sees a repairman with a tail, she might get suspicious. When Sabrina hears a crash, she goes to investigate, but asks Salem to ensure that Jenny doesn't follow her. Of course, he could just be helpful and guard the door, or he could say this. Hey, dogs guard, cats watch, and judge. Any pet owner knows this to be accurate, Dogs will undoubtedly stand and protect while cats, well, they're doing you a favor just by existing. Even so, it's hilariously savage, especially during Sabrina's time of need. Let's just say that the Spellman house would be a lot less dynamic without Salem. Yep, it's just another normal night at the Spellman's. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.